Good day everyone, a very warm welcome to you. I hope you're well. My name is Nick and we're looking at another homebrew on the ZX Spectrum. There's been lots and lots of great homebrews that come out in 2020, so we'll see how this one compares. It's The Lost Treasure of Tulum, published by Retroworks in 2020. Previously reviewed another game by this outfit, which is pretty good, called Dungeons of Gomelandia, so check that one out if you haven't already done so. So, it's a, a platform game of sorts, you just collect items in order for a door to open, and then you escape. So a few similarities to Dungeons of Gomelanda, so let's have a look. Now the clever bit with this game, beautiful colours, but it doesn't reveal the whole level till you get up to it. So a lot of the time you're in the dark a little bit. You've got a kind of a sabre man here, a bit of colour clash, but I can get away with that. Oops, if you fall down the pit and land on horrible stuff, you don't want to do that. So it's basically learning what the level's about. This is stage zero, the, the baby stage to try and get you going. Great music on this, it plays well and I love it already. The frames of animation, um, very, very smooth. Uh, I love the idea. Good, and we've got off that stage. So, just like Dungeons of Gomelandia, it uh, eases you in gently. I do love Retro Works 2020. Right, so, here we go then. So, what's going to be some pits there? No. So, it only reveals a little bit, it draws the area a little bit, which is great coding, uh, depending on how close you get to it. I presume this is the right way. So it's single stage levels, I think it's single screen each time. So you, it's not gonna scroll anywhere. Get off the stage and then you're there. Right, so it's just working out where to go. One of those games that as soon as you work out how to do the stage once, you should be then screaming through it for the next one and then you'll get that level that you can't get past and then it takes uh, quite a while. So there's vines to climb up, ledges to jump on and lovely magenta uh, colors and items to collect to open the door. And it looks like there's a, there's a guy there patrolling it. It looks like some kind of uh, Aztec chief or Indian fellow or Red Indian. And we must get that. So that's that's good. So we're, we're cooking on gas here. Stage two. I like that flame there in the bottom right. Can't take too much damage or you will die. The music is sufficiently spooky, isn't it, really? This is on the 128k. The treasure of Tulum, or the lost treasure of Tulum, I should say. They've lost it, and we need to find it. If this had come back out in the day, in the uh, 80s, I would have loved it, as a lot of these um, retro, uh, these uh, homebrews are. So again, it's another absolutely fantastic homebrew, and I recommend you track this one down if you own a real Spectrum or just emulation. You're gonna have a bit of fun with this, a bit of frustration as well when you get to that stage that you can't get past. But uh, if you put some time on it, you're probably gonna do a lot better than me. Uh, so this channel is, as we know, is all about not expert gameplay, but having a bit of fun, seeing how the gameplay is, and all those sorts of things, and trying to work out should I track this one down and spend some time with it. Now I know I say this with a lot of the homebrews I look at because they're so good. Eventually we're gonna come up to a homebrew that's rubbish, I'm sure. Uh, but this one is brilliant. Energy level going down on the top, you see those coloured um, bricks there. I think that's the energy level. And we're off again. Stage three. So I, I don't know how far I'm going to get on this one. Um, we'll, we'll see. Oops, oh dear, there. There we go. So next time I'll know that's there and won't lose so much energy. It's quite generous with the uh, the energy generation. You're not going to die straight away, so it's not a case of one hit and you're dead. So, you know, there's a little bit of tolerance. What's that thing there? Some kind of crazy Aztec symbol that's blocking my way. Might be a way of getting that out of the way, but I don't know as of yet. Get out of the way. If you know, let me know. If you completed the game, also let me know, because you must have put in a bit of time. So comment on the comment section, that's what I mean. A little bit of a flame, that's not going to kill us at all. Jump over that thing, it's either a chief or some crazy hippie. Right, he's lost interest now. Right, so, you, we know what to, well, we know what we, the objective of the game is just trying to work out what to do. So a platform puzzler done really, really well. So we've been viewing a homebrew every Wednesday. If you missed any of those before, please check out the review game playlist, uh, or the Spectrum playlist on the ZX Spectrum, and you will see those. They're clearly marked with the word homebrew in, in the title. I love the retro stuff. It's great, that the level of homebrew stuff that's continuously being produced. I'm getting hypnotized with this music now. Bomb, bomb. I don't know if Tulum is based on anyone in particular. Was there was there a, a real Tulum? Don't think so. So this is, it's not quite an Indiana Jones character, is it, this fellow? He's more of a, like a Sabre Man sort of chap, I would say. Of that area. It's a good choice of colors to make him yellow rather than the, uh, a white color graphic. So can we jump and get that thing? 
Yeah, see, I'm starting to get a bit stuck now, but there's no time limit on this. There was on, that I'm aware of, there, there was no one on Dungeons of Gomilandia. Oh, there was, there was one on Dungeons of Gomilandia, and, um, you know, if you hung about, it didn't give you much time on that one. If you hung about, you were doomed. Oops, I'm dead. Game over. Yeah, good font there as well. It's like an aztec -y sort of, like, theme, that. Mexican, Aztec theme, South America, that sort of thing. So we'll, we'll have another go. We'll have another go. Great um, start graphic there, too. Good music. You are trapped in Tulum. We know this and we must collect the treasure. We'll at least, at least uh, do a bit of an effort. So, have I learnt this stage? I can't fall down this next pit because there's, there's an evil plant thing down there. This should be fairly easy now. Nothing to kill us on this stage apart from that pit. Get on that level. Now the thing should, yeah, no, the thing's opened already and I dropped down. So, that's the baby level done. I'm ready for that this time. Jumped over that. It's like a crystal bush, isn't it, or something? Right, so one more thing to get, I think. Where is it? Oh, there's a, here's a guy after a straight away. Oh, I've missed that. Oh, we can get that on, on the return trip, I think. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. She's using a good percentage of the screen here, and the bits that it isn't using is covered well with this, like, HUD of the thing. Yeah, I like the way this thing moves, too. Good, good animation all the way through. It's not struggling at all. Yeah, great stuff. I can't say anything bad about this game, really. Uh, really set out well, really thought about well. Retro works. I'll be really interested in anything else that they uh, bring out. So far, just done uh, Dungeons of Gomilandia and the Lost Treasure of Tulum, which follow a similar idea each time, but uh, approach it from a different angle. Collecting items, getting a door to open. I suppose the first time you could argue that that was, that was seen, well, I can remember, there might be one before that, is Manic Miner, where you collect all the keys. That was from 1983 from Bug Bite. Collect all the keys and then the uh, the box would flash and then you'd hit that and exit. This time it's more of a, of a door. Uh, there was a game we reviewed, a homebrew called Vampire Vengeance, where you had to basically kill everyone and then you got to a door that way. So it's oh, lots of variants on a theme. Lots of variants on a theme. And you've got to love, you've got to love 8 bit gaming. A really active homebrew market at the moment. Long may it continue. I think with the uh, introduction of the Spectrum Next, that gave it a bit of a boost uh, too. So, hurrah! Bomb, bomb. I like the way the enemies, um, they go around at random, but sometimes they, they jump up stuff. Right, that's that done. Stage three. Now, I'm not going to complete this game. It's not going to, oh, look, it's done the same problem as before. I'm not going to complete this game. It's not a walkthrough uh, like that. But, as I say, hopefully you're, you're just watching this and thinking, yeah, this is worth this is worth tracking down for a game you might not necessarily have come across. So it's just increasing the uh, awareness of the thing. Track it down if you're if you're a Spectrum fan. I'm getting quite relaxed on this, although, although I'm dying quite a lot and it's causing me a bit of head scratching. It does keep the old grey matter going. Oh dear, look at that. <laughs> My grey matter might have been 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 sliced to pieces there. Right, so I've lost a lot of energy. Now now this is this is taxing my brain a little bit how to how to do this. I need to get on that vine somehow. The Jeremy vine. No, I can't get up there. How do I get on that vine there? Right, now now this is the bit where possibly I need some slight like, hints and tips to know uh, what to do. Right, it's got that one. There's three others to get. How do we get these? I do not know. Maybe I need a jetpack somewhere. Well, that's how we get that one. So two left. One on the right, as you can see. And one sort of like, well, mid, mid left. Using all the spectrum colours really, really well. Hasn't, hasn't missed any out at all, is it? White, red, magenta, green, cyan there, white, yellow. They're all there. Black for the background. Where we go? There we go. As I say, it's a slight bit of colour clash, but acceptable. Acceptable. Doesn't detract at all from the, the gameplay or the quality of the thing. Uh, animation, as I say, both on the central character and the enemies coming to get you is good. And a nice uh, gentle learning curve on this one, and then it gets tricky, well, by my standards, by about stage three. But I'm sure, I'm sure um, if I weren't commentating on it, I'll be zipping through. Let's just, let's just say that. I'll be using all my brain rather than about 2% of it. Right, how do I get up there? Hmm. I 
don't know. There's a very obvious way. I mean, I think I've uncovered all of the uh, the screen. There's no there's no hidden bits now because I've been everywhere. So logically, I should be able to work out um, where to go from here. It's just it, I'm just getting past that yellow block. I think that's that's the thing I need to um, work out because that's blocking me from getting there. And I can't walk on that diagonal ledge and drop onto the the mid one. Yeah, that's that's interesting, and I can't jump over that horrible thing as well because the ledge is preventing me from jumping. So, you know, something something clever needs to happen here, and I can't get from one vine to another vine. Hmm, talent has run out Nick, quite quickly this time. Bomb, bomb. Yeah, thank goodness there is no time limit. I think I need to go on YouTube because there's probably be a walkthrough. I need to go on YouTube and work out how someone's done this stage because it's probably extremely obvious. Uh, and as soon as you've done it, you're there. Might be I need to be right on the edge of that thing. Yeah, he's not grabbing hold of that thing. Yeah, and I've fallen down the bottom again. That door isn't open. Uh, perhaps I need the axe from the Maze Game Escape from 1982, and then I can just cut that um, door to pieces. Or a red key, perhaps from Attic Attack, which is often guarded by the Mummy Man. I'm sure. I'm sure it's interchangeable, and we'll work on this game as well. What do you think about that? Yeah, let's just let's just say yes, Nick. Right, Attic Attack, of course, now out on the Commodore 64 as well, and it's glorious. It's got lots of different colours on it added there. And they've done a really good job on that one, so check that out. It's homebrews go. Uh, right, I'm. This isn't going to happen. This isn't going to happen. I don't think. But uh, let's not detract. This is a great game. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. Ooh. Different to other ones we reviewed, like uh, Bonnie and Clyde, which was great fun as well, but for for different reasons. This one's a little bit classier uh, uh, than that. It's sort of like uh, salutes old school stuff. I think this is the sort of game that Ultimate would be doing if they were um, still doing Spectrum games today. Ultimate, play the game. There'll probably be some uh, other Attic Attack ghost things that probably generate around the place too if they did do that. Oh man, is there is there something here that I just can't see that I should be uncovering? Yeah, I think that... No. Yes. I think it might be game over soon, because it seems quite obvious I'm not going to progress any further. He needs a tip. He needs He needs a bit of help. He needs a bit of help. And I think that, that's died. Anyway, so we got... Well, we got a small way into the game. I showed you uh, quite a bit there as it says game over. But I could highly recommend this one. It is beautiful, both in sound, gameplay... Uh, colour, well, everything really. So, hope you like having a look at that one. That was a lost treasure of Tulum on the ZX Spectrum 128K, played by Retroworks in 2020. If you've got any comments about this game, similar games, or anything homebrew or retro, then please put that below. You're always more than welcome. Until next time, take great care of yourself and a very fond goodbye. Goodbye.